of Jojo, what is going on tonight? Oh my goodness, tonight, Jojo. It is, it's a Friday night hurt. As usual, we've got a big night tonight. It's beer and box press nights. So we're excited about that. It's the uh, Friday Night Herf with beer and box press. And, and by the way, uh, beer and box press, Brad from Tampa, not beer and bench press. No. <laughs> not beer and bench press. It's beer and box press. In fact, tonight, throughout the night, uh, the best entry with the hashtag beer in box press win the new dojo t-shirt we'll talk about that in a second and some cigars from me so uh throughout the night we're gonna have some fun in fact on the dojo we went and got a bunch of beer tonight man i'm telling you earlier tonight earlier tonight before the show started we were smoking the brand new 1502 xo which we're going to talk about on the show we were smoking that with this Firestone uh, limited release, the 19th anniversary Firestone beer. It was like an angel pooped on my tongue. That's how good the combination was. Absolutely incredible. Two of them together, really, it was an amazing look. It was amazing. So we'll talk more about uh, that combination a little later in the show. But here, let me show you some of the beers we got for tonight's event. So we got this, uh, what do you call this? Udekrika? Uh, I don't even know. This is like an original Belgian style creek beer. So uh, we're going to drink this a little bit later with our box of cigars. Uh, we got the, uh, this Paradox. This is a, uh, a uh, barrel-aged sour. So this should be super tasty. We'll try that a little bit later. We got a uh, higher math dog dogfish head right here. This is good. what? It's the birthday beer, seventeen percenter. So we'll have to make sure that we have designated driver after that bad boy. We got the uh, we got a fancy effing stout. From uh, River North, this is a local uh, Denver brewery, good. and then uh, we got the uh, Matt Potter from Dallas Point uh, watermelon uh, beer, which should be super tasty. And then we got a really rare one that we're going to try later. It, it's called I don't know, Squares. I think it's French. We'll try that later, but it should be a fun night. Hey guys, if you didn't know. We got the Dojo T-shirts, the new Dojo T-shirts here. I'm wearing one. Check this out. They are super cool. These things are so soft, it's like a koala bear pelt on your skin. You, you feel like you just rubbed yourself in butter. And you put these on. This up, and we, uh, this time around, we had a special uh, ink done so that it doesn't get all thick and hot. It's like breathable ink. And uh, so these are for sale now on the dojo. Got a cool, uh, got a cool back print too. But uh, it's like a shirt that you know, you know, a little kid you got, and it just feels so soft that you just want to wear it all the time. So uh, make sure to order these limited edition uh, shirts. So we're excited about these bad boys. So go to the dojo website, order yours today. Like, Jordan, they've been selling like what? Like hotcakes, maybe. So uh, get in between. The so let's get started on the show. I'm super excited about the show tonight. Uh, our guest is uh, a guy that I've been following ever since I got into cigars. Uh, one of the first, this, you can't see this from 15 to 20 years was active early on at social media. And when I first started the dojo, he was one of the first guys that was doing a lot of social media stuff. And I've been following him ever since. Incredible cigars. Tonight I'm going to smoke the, uh, 
the 1502 Ruby Lancero. And it just happens that uh, it usually makes a lot of box press stuff. So it just uh, fit in perfectly with the tonight's theme of the show. If you're watching right now live on the video and you have a question for me or a question for Enrique, make sure to post on the video with hashtag AskDojo. And I will uh, try to fit it into the show. I already have several. I've got a couple email questions. I think I got a Twitter question. And so we'll ask those towards the end of the show. So make sure you do that. That'll be fun. I'm going to fire up my uh, 15 or 2 here in a second. But without further ado, let me bring on to the show Enrique Sanchez, the mastermind behind 1502 Cigars. Enrique, welcome to Smoke Night Live, brother. Uh, thank you very much, Master Sensei. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. Uh, always watch your show. We enjoy it. And, you know, thank you for having me. Well, we couldn't be more excited to have you on the show because, uh, Enrique, you are a passionate, passionate guy <laughs> when it comes to cigars. And uh, if, if, if any of you guys out there watching tonight have ever – seen Enrique before on any other shows or on the, some of the videos he's done, you'll get the sense for the passion that he has for cigars and particularly Nicaraguan cigars. So Enrique, maybe tell us a little bit about you, how you got your start in the business, uh, the overview of the company, why the name 1503. Let's just start with uh, how you got the start in the business. Well, it's, it was very interesting because, you know, a, my, my father and uh, my grandfather, they all come from the tobacco background. Uh, they were in Cuba. I'm oh, just kidding. Uh, with all the respect, uh, with all my Cuban friends uh, had nothing to do with Cuba. And <laughs> I'm from Nicaragua, 100% Nicaragua. And the first of, genera of my generation that I know, or my family that knows that is in the tobacco. Actually, when I, start, when I told my family I was going to start enjoying uh, the, the cigar industry, everybody's like, but but it's like well it's my passion it's what I love I've been I've been smoking cigars over 27 years over so you know now uh, let me do let me fo let me follow my dreams so it, it, it was a very unique thing and it's, it, and it's very interesting because it's uh you don't see you see a lot of Nicaraguan cigars in the industry that's for sure but you don't see a lot of Nicaraguan faces right. uh, it, it, so it, it was a very part of it. And, 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 and something where I really uh, honored to be is, is for my country. I love my country. I love every, uh, uh, everything that Nicaragua has to offer to. That's one of the reasons every time we do an event, that's one of the first thing you see is, uh, is my Nicaraguan flag. I always carry my Nicaraguan flag with me. Right. Yeah, that is interesting. You know, uh, you made a good point. Like uh, almost every interview we do, um, there's some sort of Cuban heritage or my grandfather was Cuban or this and that. And uh, but they a lot of them end up in Nicaragua or the Dominican Republic. But you, on the other hand, you are uh, a Nicaraguan guy that has brought uh, the passion of Nicaraguan tobacco to the market, and that's a bit unique. I don't know a whole lot of other guys in the industry that are uh, Nicaraguan and they have that uh, that sort of like passion for your country and your tobacco the way you do. Well, first of all, let me tell you about about the passion for my country. When I when I told my friends that I was gonna get married and move to Miami, everybody was like, "What? You you went to Miami? You live in Nicaragua?" And I'm like, guys, do you hear the first part and say I, I was gonna get married? Yeah, but you actually gonna live outside of Nicaragua? <laughs> then no one believed the part. And so yeah, now I got married eh, five, almost five years ago, and then my wife moved me to Miami, so I I, I live in Miami now. But yeah, the, the heart, the passion of Nicaragua is something I've always been. My family has been living in Nicaragua for, what, over 200 years. So it's not like I just became Nicaragua for the cigars. So that's, <laughs> that's a quite different story there. So combine two great passions. One, my country, Nicaragua. And two, the passion for the cigars. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's a dream come true. Now, um... We just uh, got back. We did a Nicaragua. We did the cigar safari thing. Uh, Drew Estate had a blast. Beautiful. I fell in love with the country myself, and uh, I could imagine retiring there and, and living there. Uh, what part of the country is your? Did you come from? Your family? Where, where are you guys from in Nicaragua? Well, I was born in Leon, Nicaragua, and I lived in Managua all my life. 
So, uh, or, or from, from the Sanchez and the Casa uh, family, we all come uh, from Leon. So that's, that's where we're original from. But yes, it has been Managua since uh, almost since, into, uh, since I w- uh, has been, war- been born into the last five years that it was been Managua, Managua, Managua. Was there a, was there a person in the industry, uh, in the business that sort of, you know, brought you along and got you into the, into the business or did you just sort of like, you know, do it completely on your own or how did that happen? Well, it's great you asked that question because yes, it, 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 it has been one person in specific day. I would say twist my arm and push me to be in the industry. And, that, and I think that a lot for, uh, to Nestor Placencia Sr. Uh, I remember the first meeting I had with Nestor Placencia. I had this idea of business uh, with something related to tobacco. And, and they're pitching my idea. And he very humble, very easy guy. Just listen to me, very careful, smoking his cigar. And he's like, after 20 minutes, he's like, Enrique, let me stop you there. That's, that business is not going to go anywhere. I'm like, oh, Jesus, six months of research or work and everything. Uh, and I was depressed. And he's like, and, he, and he's so wise. He turned the table on me. It's like, why don't you make your own cigar? I like, I like to smoke everybody's cigars. Like to, it's like, you can still do that. But, you know, we have uh, all the cigars that you need, all the cigars that, that you can imagine. I'm sure that we can come up with something that you will be very pleased. And, and under like, no, nah, Australian, he's so humble. He comes to me and says, Enrique, give me a chance. When that happens, I feel like somebody slapped me right in the face. I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. I should be on my knees asking for this guy for a chance. And he's so humble, still asking me for a chance. So in that time, I'm like, okay, what's the worst going to happen? I'm going to come, I was living in Nicaragua at that time, so I'm going to come to Salim more often. I'm going to learn about, about the process. I'm going to learn about the tobacco. Because I knew about the cigars, but all the, to- all the blending, the tobacco, that's another, another work completely. Uh, and, you know, if it doesn't work, at least I'm going to enjoy a lot of cigars. So, uh, and then, uh, they, of course, uh, a lot of work. I remember the first time I walked into the factory uh, and sitting down in the blending room with, with two great master blenders. And I, to- and I, I told them, guys, Let's start from scratch. I've uh, been smoking cigar for doesn't matter, but teach me like you would teach a five-year-old kid everything from scratch. And they had a patient of months and months and months teaching me every little detail. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a tobacco. Okay, we got four regions, main region in Nicaragua with the grow tobacco. Jalapa, Condega, Estelio, Ometepe. All right, so let's go. Let's try only Ometepe. Let's see how it goes. Let's go Liso. Eh, seco, eh, eh, viso seco. Now let's, let's try eh, eh, li, eh, Condega. Let's try eh, este, now. Li, li, give me all four ligeros. Let me all four visos and see the difference between the oil, how how the burn, the texture, the texture, the smell, the flavor, each of, of, of the profile, each of the, uh, of the tobacco from our region. And after, and that was took months and months and months of preparation until we first start blending. And, and, and of course that was that, that, that was a, a, a fun part, but also very demanding because I already know what I want in my uh, in flavor profile and characteristic, but I didn't know how to get there. So they were they were the ones leading me how to get there, and that's when we came out with 1502 Emerald, 1502 Ruby, and 1502 Black Gold, the two the, the three original blends. Now, how long ago? How long ago was this? When did you uh, when did you do this session with the Sentia family? Wow, you know what? It's very interesting because. Uh, a month ago, my distributor called me and said, Enrique, I have a present for you. I'm like, well, I love presents. You bring it over. <laughs> and, and, and so I get a box and open it. It's a box of 52 Emerald. And I'm like, why would it send me a box of 52 Emerald? And I'm like, wait a second. No, they can't be. And look at the box. Oh, my God. This production one, first production. Wow. I know I was shocked. That was in 2010. 2010. So I, I, and, and 10. 10. So as you can, 10, yes. As you can imagine, I, I, I was shocked. I was like, first cigar I grew up, like, I want to try this after six years. I want to see how they go. And it was imaginable delicious. It was a great experience. That's awesome. So, hey, 
talk about the branding, uh, the 1502 name. Like, uh, I know what it means, but a lot of people might not realize why you chose 1502 cigars. Maybe you could uh, tell the listeners and the viewers about the 1502 name. Well, first of all, we tried 1502, 1501, it was taken. Then 1503, no, I'm kidding. That's to do with that. <laughs> Actually, I know. I know a lot of people ask me that question. No, it's not my PIN number for my credit card. It will not work. Trust me. People have tried it. My wife has tried it. That's not work. Uh, no, it was, it was in the year 1502 when I, I great, uh, reached a very risky settlement. It was selling the Caribbean Sea. And it's about to sink when he saw this piece of land. He tried to get the closest he can to the piece of land. And with that, and we did the sun came out, sunshine. So he was a very a religion person. He got in me and started thanking God for extra time. And it was Christopher Columbus, the name of the, of, of, of the person. And he named that piece of land Cabo Gracias a Dios. Thank God, he today it's a borderline for Honduras and Nicaragua. It happens in the year 1502. That was the first time that Nicaragua was put in the map as a point of reference for everybody else to enjoy. Uh, I think it's a great name. And one of the things I really appreciate about your brand so far is you haven't blasted out, a, you know, it's been six years, but you haven't uh, blasted out a million different brands. And it's really understandable to mine. You have the emerald, ruby, and the black, and then you have some other but you know, you can follow the line very easily. And it's one of my criticisms about some brands is, you know, they go a million different directions, but you've been very careful to just sort of focus on your core line and then add a little bit here and there. Uh, but I appreciate that with the uh, the, the emerald, the black. Now, explain to people, like, uh, how that transition. You have the emerald, ruby, and black, and I think what you, you have, you have the – the emerald with breakfast, the ruby with lunch, and the black with dinner, or something like that. Uh, yes. so talk a little bit about your brand and why you chose to just really focus for so many years on that core line. Well, it, it was very interesting because uh, when I first got into the industry, people asked me, where is it? You, you're not, you're not you, you don't come from a tobacco background whatsoever. I don't know where you come up with three different blends. Are you crazy? And well, yeah, maybe they have they have they have some some, some something to do with that. But uh, the main part of it is that I like variety. Uh, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't I would not be so satisfied as having one cigar and that's it. I like I like to evolve my palate. I like to try new things. So that's why we create 15 to Emerald to be as you well said, my breakfast cigar. 15 to Ruby, my after lunch cigar, and 15 to Black Gold, my my after dinner cigar. Uh, so you got something more. My own plus, medium plus strain, and more full body in, in that transition. Yeah, you know what's funny, uh, Enrique? I don't know if you remember this or not, but um, way back when I was first starting the dojo, uh, and me and you had talked, and uh, I think you sent us some samples to review and stuff like that, but then you had a, you had a contest on Twitter, and the contest was who's ever the I think I think it's my thousandth follower or something, and um, I I followed you on Twitter from my personal account, not the Gojo account. Yes. Just by chance, I won that box of black, uh, black, and when I got it, man, it was it was incredible. I remember sending you saying, "Do you know uh, that I'm the guy from the Dojo?" and, and it was like, it was really amazing. I just happened to be your thousand follower. Yep. Yes. It was, I do perfectly remember that part. And, you know, it, it, it's uh, I always said nothing is for luck. Everything is for a reason. And that's we're still here after uh, how long was that? Five years ago? I think something like three that. Years ago. Yeah. Three years ago. Imagine that. We're yep. still here and, and we always relax and enjoy. Right. And that brings me to an important question about your brand. And we have this conversation all the time in the dojo about uh, the part that presentation plays in how people appreciate a cigar. Like, for instance, when you get a, uh, an Opus X, the mm. presentation is just gorgeous. Or when you get a, uh, a box of De Crochet and it's just, it's just to perfection and you open that box 
and you just know it's going to taste amazing. Yes. There is something about presentation that just makes you appreciate. Now, don't get me wrong. If there's a fantastically presented cigar and it's terrible, you're still going to not like it. But if there's a good cigar and it has good presentation, it makes a world of difference. And I think that's one of the things I appreciate about your line. Your boxes have like individually. Let me show. Yes. I'll show you. I'll show people the XL here. So if you can see these like little individual spaces, all the boxes from 1502 have that. Company. And if you open up that box, you get so excited to pick that cigar. So if you could speak a little bit about that, what our presentation plays in the brand and how you think that, that affects the cigar, I'd be real interested to hear your thoughts. Well, I mean, presentation has a lot to do with it. Uh, that's 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 one of the key things in, in any industry, not not in in, in only in cigars. Uh, it, I mean, you can see in, in, in many other products. It, it, it's not about just making one cigar. It's just giving that characteristic that the art is part of, of, the, of the, that goes around that cigar as as well. So that is very important uh, to to do so. As you did mention, each of, each of the boxes are unique, are different. 15.2 MRO is going to be more like antique uh, box, uh, a more a color, a green color, a dark green color. The ruby will be more red color. The black gold will be more black, uh, definitely more black gold, but give it that, that antique look in, 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 in the cigars. Uh, and then we came out with a 15.2 Nicaragua. It was uh, almost two years ago, in which uh, and, and everybody is like, well, why, why didn't you just come out with, with another line of, of precious stone? Well, I did. Nicaragua. What else? What other presidents so you, you can imagine as being a Nicaragua? And very important. Uh, let me do a parenthesis in that one. How I came out with that blend is when my wife told me she was praying for my youngest one. Oh. I, my, my youngest one was born here in the United States, uh, but I want to create a blend that he never forget his roots. That's why I said a pure Nicaragua and has tobacco for all four regions. We brought tobacco in Nicaragua. Uh, so you got Jalapa, Condega, Estelillo, Metepe, all in one blend. Mm -hmm. And the first time I, I came out with that one, it was for, for his baptism. So oh my, if you can imagine, I do have a very small family. So the baptism was around 200 something people. So everybody was like <laughs> jumping on it. And, and, and the 15 with Nicaragua, that was even before it was it hit, hit the shelves in the United States or worldwide. So but, but back to your question, the presentation has to do a lot with it. It's your extension of how you feel, how you are, who you are. And that is it's a key thing. Uh, you were talking about the presentation of the XO, in which actually it's not being, it's not released yet until tomorrow. It will be the release day. And it's, if you can see, I don't know if you can barely, if you can see, if you can put a the camera there, uh, 512XO. Uh, that, that I had the, one of the greatest advantage of having a great friend as somebody's working uh, with me or has been working with me and he did help me do the, the presentation from the Nicaragua and he did, uh, he did all, the, all, the, all the packaging as well for the 152XO. Den Dennis Hernandez, you know, he used to work for Habano SA. And, and I told him, this is the name, this is what I want in, in, in the presentation, make you magic. Mm -hmm. A week after he came up with the first draw and, and I was like blown away, that's it, that's what I want. That it, it screen exactly what I have in my mind but I couldn't picture it. And he did a great job of that. Oh, so yeah. we, are, we are very cautious, not only uh, uh, handcrafting each of our cigars, it's also when you open the box, it's a unique experience for, for, for you. Everybody, when they get the box, and they're like, oh my God, this is a beautiful box. And you know, you always get the, the wife is like, let me keep the box so I can put my jewelry, I can put my things there and everything. So it, it's, it's, always, it's always pleased to, to know that, that not only the cigar is being appreciated, also the entire experience. Right. So now we're to the point. Let's let's talk about this uh, XO. So tomorrow's the big day that it gets released. And uh, it's not a limited edition, but a limited production cigar. Yes. So uh, this would come out every year in a, in a different Vitola. <laughs> but uh, let's talk through this, Enrique, and, uh, and uh, talk about uh, this is 18-year-aged tobacco some probably uh, probably the filler or binder or something and so talk about this cigar explain to everybody uh, how you came up with this and the uh, thought process and what they're gonna 
expect when they fire one of these bad boys up? Well, first of all, uh, yes, yeah, like you say, it's 18 year old tobacco. Uh, of course, the, the rapper is not 18, you know, you cannot age a, a good rapper for, for that long. Uh, but uh, yes, the binder, the long footers, 18 years of tobacco. So that was, uh, has been almost uh, over three years in the process of the making uh, or, the, or the blending, and which has been the most tough part. And also the, the, the packaging, the everything has to be ready. I mean, even the bands, if you can see, they have their own serial number. And which they, were in, they were made in Holland by Brick I mean, those are the ones that make uh, Opus, they're the ones that make Koyo Mexique bands. And, you know, for a boutique brand to jump to, jump to, to that level, it, it, it was a big com- commitment. But you know what? The cigar itself, it deserved a great, extreme, a, a classic, elegant packaging. Uh, so like you said, yes, it, it, it's not a limitada. It's a limited production. This year, we came out with 1,502, 1502 right. boxes. Each of the boxes has a serial number. Starting from zero 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 zero, and which is the only box I do keep, uh, <laughs> to one thousand five hundred two uh, of one thousand five hundred two boxes. So it, everything comes in total size, box of ten. Uh, uh, next year it will be another run. Uh, that means that the seventy-year-old tobacco is walking the way to the eighteen, and there will be, a, but it will be in another bitola, and that's one of the great things because uh, you get. If you have that box uh, of number 221 in the total side, you're the only one in the world who will ever have that. Because to, uh, next year, it will be an Albitola, and then the year after that will be an Albitola. So it, the, the ones they like to collect, it's a collecting item. And everybody in the sh- uh, right now in the shops, they're like, I need two boxes, one to smoke, one to collect. Right. <laughs> I'm mean, like, wait a second. There are not that many boxes. You know, everybody knows that. They're like, yeah, I know, I know, but I want, I want mine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> But once they we were uh, they run out and we uh, they're just about to run out, uh, we had to wait until next year when the 70 year tobacco is ready to to age age for the 18 year to be released. Enrique, I want to I want to publicly claim box number 1502 of 1502. That's the one I want. So wherever that box is, whoever has it, contact me. I'll buy that <laughs> box I want. You know, it's very interesting. You know how many requests that we have to have of the box, and uh, to be, to make it fairly, uh, we everything is 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 uh, is, ch- is, ch- is, ch- is shuffle. So we don't know who's gonna get what. So whoever gets, and uh, please let, let me know because I would love to see the box too. <laughs> <laughs> So in uh-huh. tonight on the dojo, it's it's box press night and beer night, and uh, I don't know if you're into craft beer or not, but we've got some really great craft beer. But the thing that interests me is that uh, you are uh, really great at making box press cigars, and we get the question all the time: Why box yeah, press cigars? Is, is there an advantage? Flavor does add to the flavor? Talk about box press and why you choose to box press most of your products. Oh, it's that's a great question that you ask. And, you know, when I do my blending, I always have, uh, I always use Toro size because with Toro you can go up and down. Uh, once we get the blend right, I, 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 got, I make the factory make me all the different sizes, box press, and round it, so I can try to see which one, what bitol I go first, and if a box press or, or, or round cigar will be more f- suitable. And the funny thing, or the, or the fact that they're always like, yeah, we know we're going to do box press. No, we do not know that for sure. But and after that, I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, it's box press. I'm like, yeah, we, we knew about that. It's a big difference. When you box press a cigar, that cigar gives you an extra flavor, extra strain that normally does not give you the round cigar. I, it was very interesting because we did a testing a blend testing, and actually I didn't do the blend testing. I, they provide a cigar from the same uh, table, from the same rollers, uh, rounded and box press. We send it to Cigar Journal, and they did a blend testing. Mm-hmm. I, on 15 to Emma, 15 to Ruby, 15 to Black, Black Gold, they took their band, the band off, and they were in the same, in the same event. They give uh, everybody that runs cigar. After that, they give it the, 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 the box press cigar. Everybody in that room, 
thought they were smoking another cigar. Mm. So it does make a big difference about it, completely different about it. I mean, you right now, you, you, you're enjoying a 1502 Ruby Lancero. When, when was the, the, the first time you seen a box press Lancero? And let me ask you, how's the draw? It's amazing. It's perfect. With a perfect draw. I not, know. Only that, not only that, Enrique, but uh, uh, in full disclosure, uh, I went out and bought this cigar just today. So I have not been resting this particular cigar at all. And it's burning absolutely perfectly. And the draw is perfect, and it's delicious. So uh, it, that's proof right there that uh, some cigars don't no. eat really good right now. So I have to try. Yeah. Well, in the, all cigars, once they're put in the, in the box, they should be ready to, to enjoy. Uh, yeah, it's always good to let it rest for a little while, but they should be ready. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, we always make sure that quality control in our cigar is always top notch. Uh, and it's something interesting because I don't know if, if everybody knows this, but you, you always make the round cigar and then you box press it. But when you make that the cigar, they have to be in the aging room. And my cigars stay there from, from four to six months in the aging room. Then you box press the cigar and, and then you will know how the draw is. Because when you box press it, you if you put too much tobacco on it, it will be too tight, and you then you have a problem with the draw. If you let it too loose, uh, the cigar will get too much air and will not uh, smoke even. It will, it, it, the flavor will completely uh, change uh, the characteristics of the cigar. It will definitely change, uh, and and then you have problem. So how you maintain that equilibrium in that cigar is really tough. That's why in the entire fact is actually there are only four boncheros in which they do my Coronas and my Lanceros, in which they're both box press. Interesting. So, hey, I forgot to ask you, uh, what's the price point yes. per stick on the XL? So you guys know what to expect when they buy a stick. Is it, uh, you're looking at it? Well, that, that's a, a, around $40, $50 a stick. No, just kidding. It's seventeen seventy five. I mean, 18 year old tobacco right. with that quality. It's unbeatable. Everybody's like, really? That's it? And of course, then I get, I get, I get the scream from my wife. I told you you should have put it higher. <laughs> no. Uh, we, we want people to actually uh, be able to enjoy cigars all the time. So it, it's, it's uh, the price point. It's, it's great there. But once you try the cigar, I'll guarantee you, well, you're already dead, so you know how, how that goes. You think about how much you spend for the cigar. Hey guys, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had those like cherry cordials, like a chocolate <laughs> covered cherry with a bunch of juice inside of it, and you bite into it and the juice runs down your mouth. That's what the XO tastes like. It was like the chocolate covered cherry. Uh, super luxurious, I call it, a, I would call it a dessert stick. And uh, amazing all the way to the nub. Never, ever did it get. Harsh, and it really, here's the interesting thing, it didn't taste like a typical Nicaraguan stick. Like a lot of times you, you grab a Nicaraguan stick and you instantly tell it's Nicaraguan. The XO, maybe because of the age, uh, it was really balanced and sweet and tons of like luxurious, elegant flavors. Yes, you know it's it, it's it's a it's a, there's some tobacco in which they're great for aging. There's some tobacco in which then it's like wine. You better drink it now because it's not going to get any better. Uh, and, and trying to choose the right tobacco, uh, be able in which they're available. Eighteen year old tobacco, you, either you have it today, you don't have it at all, or you have to wait eighteen years for that. It's really tough. But you know the tough the toughest part of that is you can create one cigar or a bunch of cigar once. Great. How can you multiply in time and always maintain the same consistency, the same quality control? And that's even harder. And that's why it, you have to have the 18-year-old tobacco, 18 tobacco. You have to have the 17-year-old tobacco. You have to have the 16-year-old tobacco as well. The 15 and so on and so on. So once the 18, it, it, it's out, released, that a new batch works in and they always keep the chain. But and that's easy when you, you're only working in one type of tobacco, but those are different 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 uh, uh, tobaccos so uh, that, that means you have to have uh, the 18 for uh, this batch this batch this batch to do the blending all the time same with the 17 so it, it's a lot tougher harder to make it and always maintain a quality 
Right. So let's talk a little bit about the distribution. So how can guys get this cigar? You you are part of the new uh, Boutiques United, and uh, that's a group that has Ezra Dion and uh, Nomad. It's a really great boutique cigar. Or if a guy said, hey, how do I get my hands on an XO, uh, what would you tell them? Well, what we did, we tried to do the most uh, a, a clear way to, do, to serve our clients. Uh, so we, what we divide, it's a, in three different ways. The first way, uh, all our A accounts will be served first into from, from, from uh, last week to the 25th of March. And so they, they, they should already have uh, all the 50 to XO and they were allocated to their accounts. Uh, and after that, it will be the second wave, uh, and then April, uh, in the end of April, will be the third wave. So, uh, because it was really tough, uh, I mean, this cigar was supposed to be released in October last year. So, if you can imagine, uh, everybody has been waiting very, very tough for, for, for the cigar. So, it, it could, we couldn't manage to uh, send everybody at the same time. So, trying to do it more fairly, we did divide it in, in three different ways. So uh, uh, the ones that they already have it uh, uh, are, are, are the, the, the A accounts right now. But in the end, the idea is everybody that has they have 50 or two cigars will have 50 or two XO as well. How many uh, boxes? It all depends on how, uh, the, 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 how many lines they're the carrying, the dedication they have put uh, to, to, to our company. So that way, it's always a, a big mix. And just like any cigar, guys, if you're out there and you're uh... – your local shop doesn't carry it, you know, ask them to carry it. They, uh, I heard a lot about uh, 15 or two, and you can bring it in the shop. I mean, a lot of times, it's really small, and uh, it's just a line in there. So, um, okay, we're happy to so I got a bunch of uh, viewer questions. Sure. Are you ready to answer some of my dojo questions? I'm always ready. Please right. do so. All right, we have a uh, R. Wilson 42. He asked an interesting question. Uh, what is unique and special about Nicaraguan tobacco? That's a great question. Well, first of all, let me tell you something about Nicaragua. Uh, sadly, if you, if you remember back in the 80s, we had a civil war. That means our land, uh, the more fertile land for our tobacco, was rested for over 10 years. So now we got this land in which is rested. It has all the minerals, it has all the soil in the, in the land, and it's perfect to have a great tobacco. Second of all, our land has been, it's always well, been one of the most fertile lands in, in the region. Well, and that's, that, that's always make a great, a great, great thing. Sorry. Because uh, you got like uh, lakes and volcanoes, right? Well, yes, Nicaragua, is, uh, nickname as is land, land of lakes and volcano. We got uh, was 19 or 21 volcanoes and three big lakes. So, right. it's, uh, <laughs> so and the other thing is that we do have a great experience uh, uh, with all, all our friends from Cuba. They, they, they established in Nicaragua, and they hope to grow this wonderful industry, and they bring all the knowledge uh, uh, to, to, to our country. And that's why you now you see in the top 10 to 25 cigar of the year and in all the magazines, always Nicaragua is, is number one. Right. So there you go, uh, R. Wilson. Thanks for the question. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Big Fat Smoke. And uh, Big Fat Smoke wants to know, this is a common question on the dojo. We get it every week. What are, your, what are some of your favorite non brand cigars that you like? Oh, that's, that's, that would be a long answer. Because <laughs> I do like to enjoy many other cigars as well. I mean, only in, in the Boutique United family. I mean, all the Air Force Science, the Nomad, Emilio cigars. We, 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 got, we just got a, a black label on board, a, a part of the family as well, too. So if you see only in that aspect, or only in that uh, category of boutiques, we got a lot to choose from. I mean, oh, uh, only in Nicaragua, you, you got the Padron family always making great cigars. La Ciencia himself is doing great cigars as well. My father, uh, Oliva, you got, you got a great father from New York State. I mean, and, and, and Dave Fernandez that has a great job. I mean, it's, it's, the list 
would never stop. I mean, I, ha I have a, a humor with everybody else brand as well, and I love to enjoy everybody else brand as well. So it, I'm not always smoking only 15 or two cigars. And, and besides that, the new blends will be working and the process. I like to enjoy everybody else's cigars as well. Right. Yeah, that's a cool thing about the cigar biz is uh, camaraderie and the like and competition. And people don't worry about promoting other guys' brands. It's like there's a lot of camaraderie in the, in the industry. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I mean, you couldn't be in the best industry that, that be in this industry. I always, I always said the most wonderful people I met has been with a cigar in my hand. I met my wife with a cigar in my hand, just to give you an example. And, and every day when I go out and visit shop, visit friends, you always adding more people to the list. And it's wonderful. You always end up opening doors. I always call the magical cigars. When, you know, there was, there's so many stories of, in which there's something happening and everything, you know, and a cigar, it changed that completely the perception the atmosphere of anything so it definitely opens doors it's beautiful yeah no doubt even at my sort of thing you know bloggers and whatnot everybody's along it's just a great all right the next question is for me i'll ask it anyways this one comes from uh rocks cigars and yes uh, go to orlando next do you have any recommendations to smoke while they're there? Now, I would say you might you might have an answer too, Enrique, in Orlando. But I would say build your app, you get there, and you shop locator. And uh, we only shop that are uh, personally recommended by other dojo members. So uh, you, uh, do you have any uh, recommendations for uh, or smoking in Orlando? Okay. Well, there, it all depends where you're going, in Orlando. I mean. Uh, the, the dojo app always helps a lot. Look, right now we are in the, in the PA area and uh, the Suburban Cigar Lounge. And we look at it in, the, in, in your app, and we're right now enjoying a cigar with, with all these friends, Gary, and everybody. So it's always the easy way to do so. But you have a great shop in Orlando. I mean, you have Coronas there. You, 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 you got Orlando Lounge as well. The many, uh, it depends where you go. If you go and go to the parks, and, and most likely you will. Trust me, I have three kids, so I know how that goes. But in, in, in social cigars, also in, in downtown Disney. So there are many places. Always check the app as a, a, and see what's the closest shop you're going to do you're nearby. And that will definitely lead you to the great experience. That's a, that is a perfect answer. Perfect answer. Thank you for that, Enrique. All right, this one comes from uh, Not Sure, and he asks you, Enrique, I really like Ruby and Jack and Sarah. How about hooking me up with a box of extras? No, you can't have big cigars. You've got to ask the opinion that but uh, Not Sure is begging for a box of extras. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite uh, hear, uh, uh, listen to the, to the question. There was some problem with the connection. That's all right. Uh, not sure was just begging for a box of XOs from you. Uh, here's uh, Anthony. Are you still there? Oh, did we lose him? We lost him. Now, look what you did, Not Sure. You ruined the broadcast. As soon as you asked the question, boom, Enrique was off the show. That was it. Blew it. Just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, ho hopefully he'll come back. But uh, it got kind of loud there. I think they were having a party. Maybe they were, maybe they were tossing some back. I had two more really good questions from the dojo community to ask, but Enrique is not on the show anymore. Can't see him. Can't hear him. He's not there. Can't even smell him. So I don't know what to tell you. So uh, all right. Hold on, let's take a look. Jordan's got a beer. Tell some jokes. Tell some jokes. I think it tastes like Skittles. So I'm going to try this live on the show. This is uh, Ballast Point. What do you call this? Dorado Watermelon. Dorado Watermelon. Double IPA with watermelon. It's a double IPA with watermelon, so Jordan says. So let's give it a try. Wow. <laughs> it's chewy. It's thick. What do you think? What do you guess the alcohol is? 
What do I guess the alcohol is? I'm going to say the alcohol is eight. Ten. Whoa. It's a ten. And uh, it really gets you right here. You know, the tannins. I don't know. Is that tannins? Might be. Yeah. Tannins. Kind of gets you right there. Starburst or Skittles. Starburst, Skittles. Uh, Matt says bubblegum. Dominic? I say watermelon IPA. Dominic says he's real creative. He says watermelon IPA. So, so I don't know. That's good. That is good stuff. Thank you, Matt, for that. It's good stuff. So here we are, Dojo. It's just me and you. What are we going to do? You know, I, I got to say, uh, Enrique is a uh, – he's a passionate dude. And uh, it's contagious, right? When he starts talking about cigars, it just makes you want to try his cigars. And they are really, really good. I know a lot of guys – I even had some text messages today. I never even heard of – 1502 cigars until today, until you brought them up, Sensei. Well, they've been around for a while, six years, as Enrique said, and they're really good. And I got to tell you guys, that uh, that stinking XO, it's expensive. He said, what, 1750 It's expensive for Joe Average guy like me. I'm, I'm like a beer drinker, and, uh, you know, I drive an old car. Right. Oh, he's back. Okay, I'm back. Okay. He's back. <laughs> yes, I tried. I, I, I didn't take. A, I, I didn't take a break to go to the bathroom. So it's something problem with the connection. We were just, we were just <laughs> making fun of you, really bad, just ripping on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love you. <ya. laughs> All right, so uh, thanks for thanks for getting back to us. I appreciate your time. We've uh, we're almost at the end of the show, but I do have really? two. I have two so more. Far? All right, two more questions. So here's the next one. The next one is from uh, Anthony R. And Anthony R. wants to know, is this going into production? Let's see if you can see this. You know what this is? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, we did a great experiment last year. Uh, we, uh, we, we always work in, in new blends and in, in new products. Uh, so uh, we had this idea to say, you know what? Let not only be asked that the ones to judge what cigar will be the market or what people think about the cigar. Let get the, the, the our friends in the industry choose what they think about the cigars. So uh, for our events, we we uh, other all, all, all our rep or the teamwork had uh, 50 or two cigars and with uh, the prototype and which they're not in the market yet. So to get the feedback out of it. So. I, I cannot say exactly if that cigar will make it to the market or when will we make it to the market, but we did get a lot of great feedback from everybody in all the different blends. So we have a very good idea what will be coming out next. But as a boutique brand, as you said from the beginning, we are not the ones that every year have to come up with something new. Right. So it was going to take some time to, to come out uh, little, little by little uh, with the other blends. So it, it, it will be hitting the shelves later on. We cannot tell you when, but definitely, and I, I guarantee you, if you put that, if you did post that picture, it's because you did like it. Yeah. And I know which one you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to that. Uh, I got one last question from the dojo community, and then we'll wrap up the show. Um, from Idaho asks a really interesting question. Right? She wants to know, if you met a person who had never heard of cigar smoking, how would you describe it to them? How would I describe a person? Sorry? Yeah, if you met a person who had never heard of cigar smoking in their life. Okay. And they wanted to know, hey, what is this, what are you doing with this thing in your mouth and you're smoking it? How would you describe cigar smoking to them? What would you tell them? Why do you do it? You know what? It's always better to try it than to explain it. But if I have to explain it, I would say it, it's something like you had never tried before. In my case, it's every time that I light uh, one of my cigar or any other cigar, it's my time. It's my moment. That time, I gave the time to my wife. I gave the time to a great dedication to my kids, to my friends, to all my clients, my consumers. But when I do light my cigar, that is my moment. And no one can take it away from me. Mm. And that is one of the great things. And that's why we have to fight very hard in our industry to maintain that right. It's our right to choose that we like to enjoy cigars for it. And we have to fight very hard for that. Right. 
What a great answer. That's kind of what I would say too. Even though it's a lot about flavors and a lot about uh, the the taste of the smoke and, uh, and stuff, but it's really more about the experience and the relaxation and the meditation when you're smoking this car. There's a lot more to it than just the flavor. Of course. I mean, it's it's the flavor, the complexity, all that combines with great music, what are you drinking, the companion you have. It helps to have a, a better moment, a better experience with the cigar. But remember, it's always your time. It's your right. moment. It's that that's a key thing. Yeah. Great answer. I do have one last one just came in. One more question. This is from uh, J Brig twenty one. And uh, he wants to know what do you like to pr- uh, pair your cigars with? What's some of your favorite pairings? That's a very good question. I'm most most likely I love scotch. I love Ron I'm from Nicaragua. I love to have I love uh, Flor, my Flor de Caña is always there too. Right. I like cognac. I like brandy. I like many other uh, spirits. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it all depends in the mood. What are you smoking with? I I, I always like the, after dinner, for example, which is one of the greatest moments to enjoy a cigar. I go to my humidor and say, mm, "What I'm going to enjoy right now? Okay, I'm going to grab this one." Then I go to my to my bar and I like choosing. It's like, ah, oh, I feel more like. Yeah, let's let's go for that for that part. So, trying to find that the great pairing, it's a great great experience. It, it, it's 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 a, it's it's a great moment. Just once you do find it, you're like, okay, that sounds perfect. And my personal f- favorite, uh, one that easy to go is always a scotch. And the reason why I like scotch is because it neutralizes your palate. Uh, it helps you to enjoy your cigar more. It it takes more of your cigar for you to enjoy. Uh, actually, uh, we, the old gray master blender used to use scotch to blend. But of course, they, they clean their mouths and they throw, they throw the scotch out. I couldn't do that. I'll be drinking the scotch after the, after the, I don't know how many drinks. I'll be like, yeah, it's ready for the production. Let's go for 200,000. Yeah, no worry. And then next day, like what I did. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I do like to pair it. It all depends in what. Yeah, uh, us at the Dojo, we're big bourbon drinkers. But beer is also good. And that's a good yeah. night for, uh, for beer. So what's coming up next for uh, 1502 Cigars? What can we see in the next well, uh, coming months from you? Well, uh, starting tomorrow, 1502 XO. Right. That is a, it's a big hit. I mean, it's, it's so incredible. We have not released it yet, and I see posts every day in social media. Everybody texting me, calling me, and say, "Oh my God, this is a great cigar!" And I'm like, "Well, you guys know it's not released yet. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard that and put the pictures." <laughs> so that's just what's coming out next, and it's 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 like I said, it's a limited production. So grab them because before they go, on, because they are flying really fast yeah no doubt that is a fantastic pick so so enrique uh in in july is uh the big show in vegas and uh every time there's a a show we have a big dojo party and it's always the best party of the show and i want to personally invite you uh, to the dojo bash you can meet up with a lot of dojo members and uh it'll be a great time so i can't wait to see you in uh, vegas in july well, I am in. Definitely will do so. I will bring the cigars. So we're going to have a great time. And for sure, uh, you know, I'm glad we're back in Vegas. I love Vegas. It's a great city. And, you know, we always have great friends there. So it's going to be a great, awesome time. We're getting a lot of good comments on the show. And one of the comments already was, you have the best voice that's ever been on Smoke Night Live. That what, sorry? You have the best voice that's ever been on Smoke Night Live. Really? Well, you know what? I've been practicing that voice for 40 years. <laughs> Hopefully now I got it right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time on a Friday night to uh, be on Smoke Night Live. I appreciate it, my friend. Uh, you know, I always said from the, the Survival Cigar Lounge here in, in PA, uh, I want to thank everybody. And just, just a little thought. Remember, it's not a cigar. It's a 1502. 
There we go, folks. All right. So, hey, we got a lot to do on the dojo tonight. We're in box press night. Fire up your cigar. Show us your best image. There'll be a prize. Hashtag beer and cigar. Uh, no, beer and box press. Sorry. Beer and box press. Beer and box press. Best picture, whether it's artistic or funny or whatever, creative. You guys are going to win a prize. New, new uh, dojo t shirt. Dojo, the dojo t-shirt, and that. You know too. And remember, folks, never smoke alone. We'll see you next week on Smoke yes. That Live. <laughs> right. So you can talk all you want.